Hey y'all, it's your girl Lady Pelvic of Pelvic Gaming, and today we're reviewing Luigi's Mansion 3. First, I played Luigi's Mansion originally on the GameCube, played it then, and then I played Dark Moon on the 3DS, which I thought was ass, and then I played Luigi's Mansion 3, which came out October 31st, 2019. Terrible release date, by the way. Anyways, my thoughts. Luigi's Mansion 3 starts out super fun, inviting, smiles all around, as our favorite gang of Mushroom Kingdom are taking a vacation. They're invited to this lavish hotel as VIP guests. All seem well, despite the far-eyed and creepy staff members, as Luigi and friends are welcomed and sent to their rooms. Cue in the scream and Luigi wakes up and the hotel looks nothing like he remembers. King Boo reveals himself, saying that he's back with a vengeance. Unprepared to take on the king, Luigi flees. But with the polter pup's guidance, he's equipped with the polter gust, a vacuum made for sucking up those pesky ghosts. The stage is set as Luigi explores each floor haunted by daffing ghosts to rescue his family and friends. The story is cute, but it's the familiar gameplay that hits home for me. I desperately wanted to feel spooked and uncomfortable like I did with Luigi's Mansion 1, and to be fair, it was at an advantage because no one knew what to expect and I was obviously younger, aka easier to spook. Although I don't think much has changed because I'm still pretty easy to spook. <laughs> <laughs> When you first get the poltergust, the tutorial is pretty straightforward, but afterward, when you're reacquainted with Professor Egad, I felt spammed with updates. This can get rather annoying if you're not new to the series. You're quickly thrown into the fray, testing out the poltergust movement set. The flashlight used to stun ghosts, suction primarily used for enemies after they've been stunned, but also used for picking up cash and coin, or ejecting big items, or blow out to push things away. Shooting a plunger with a rope at the end, also used to throw objects around, or maybe to take objects away. An air jump used to dodge attacks or clean out an area. And finally, a prismatic light used to pull things out of paintings or reveal things that are hidden. Plus, another powerful move that came late in game. A new and favorite addition is tossing enemies into each other. When the gauge is full, you have the option to smack the ghost around for devastating damage. Swing until the gauge empties, and if you hit other ghosts, you can instantly begin vacuuming them up. It's a nice, smooth combo feel. What doesn't feel, or rather look smooth, is when you're swinging ghosts around. The animation of Luigi slamming ghosts can sometimes look odd. Another problem is aiming. When using your plunger, I found aiming to be very wonky and uncomfortable. It would suddenly auto-aim if the target was meant to be plunged. This made exploration and boss fights a bit more of a chore, and occasionally you'll run into a glitch. I ran into two, one while exploring, and the other fighting the final boss. Major spoiler, I'm gonna show the final boss footage. Please skip to this number if you're not interested. Have you skipped? Okay, here we go. I warned you. The final phase of the last boss is timed. He clones himself, throws bombs at you, and you throw them back at him. For whatever reason, the boss got locked up and didn't do anything until the timer ran out. It was super frustrating and needless to say, I had to redo the entire fight over. <laughs> The most notable inclusion is Guiji, another one of Egad's wonky inventions. Guiji is Luigi made out of goo. He can slip through spikes and gates and can do everything Luigi can. You can easily switch between the two and have each respective Luigi hold certain moves or tag team. Guiji's only weakness? Water. If he touches the foul H2O, he instantly returns to Luigi. You can also play in co-op mode, and your second player will be Guiji, making this game insanely easy. Even with the arsenal of attacks and Guiji to back you up, combating various ghosts is never a dull battle. Average ghosts are made challenging by giving them something to block out the light. Boos are back and will need to be hit with prismatic light for a few seconds before being able to teach them a thing or two. Aside from enemies, you'll also need to look out for gems. Collect them all for something special, but not really. The payoff for collecting all gems and booze aren't really worth it. The gems, I can at least argue the journey was fun. It made you explore the mansion from head to toe, finding rooms you wouldn't otherwise come across. Which brings us to exploration in Luigi's Mansion. It's easily my favorite thing. Straight up ransacking each room, not even giving a second thought. Honestly, I never thought checking every toilet would be so satisfying. Rustling every object for a few coins, slamming things around to open up a new path, and chainsawing bedposts, it's everything I ever wanted in a Luigi's Mansion game. It is complete bliss cleaning out every room. Furthermore, each floor has a unique theme and designed vastly different from an ordinary hotel. 
Some floors are more side-scrolling, while others have heavy verticality. Each floor had a fun twist that tested the player's attentiveness and the use of Luigi's skills. I found later floors to be challenging and really sneaky with some of its puzzles, but still enjoyable. And they become more wild as you climb and clear the floor, and take down the nasty boss ghost to claim an elevator button, which will allow Luigi to progress. And let's just say I was incredibly impressed with some of these boss fights, very well done. Took full advantage of ghosts possessing objects, using the environment around you, and even bringing Luigi into the fray. If you find yourself struggling on what to do next, or hunting gems and booze, consider talking to Professor Egad, who will drop some hints, or stop by the lab altogether to prepare for the next floor. You can shop for items that reveal gems and booze, or maybe a gold bone which gives you a second chance after getting a game over. You can also access the multiplayer. Scare Scraper is a fun online co-op mode. Try to get through 5 or 10 floors before time runs out, each with different objectives like vacuum X amount of ghosts or save X amount of toads. Meanwhile, the floors are still littered with traps and other quirky hindrances. Scream Park is sadly local only. You play against others, taking on the most ghosts or collecting those coins and other various tasks. And as I'm making this video, there's apparently paid DLC for co-op modes coming later. Next we have the visuals, and it's safe to say this is the best Luigi's Mansion has ever looked. The cutscenes were cute and the visual storytelling was superb. With a game with very little dialogue, the ghost designs and mannerisms told you exactly who they were and what they were about. More importantly, can we talk about the running animations, specifically of EGADs? It's the greatest. Even Luigi, how he moves through the floors when he's getting scared, he stiffens up for a moment before returning to his normal demeanor. Even on the dance floor, you can see him and even Luigi tapping their toes and snapping their fingers. Expect incredible characterization the entire time. Briefly mentioned before, the level design is outstanding. How detailed each area was, from sandy areas to the kitchen. Each room flawlessly captured its respective essence. Going to the mall, you see mannequins, each store is locked up, there's clothing, etc. Going to the gym, you can lift weights or go for a swim. Even crazier levels like the medieval floor, classic torture traps are set up. And it was a creative way to feel like you were exploring a whole new world, even though it was under one haunted roof. And lastly, the music, I thought it was cute. Odd way to describe this game's music, but I appreciated each floor had its own theme. When you're catching ghosts, the music changes to something more fast paced. I also like when boo hunting, if the boos are in the same room, the music changes. A very helpful musical cue. Another thing I loved is sometimes you'll encounter remixes of the classic Luigi's Mansion theme. And now, the track I have to share with you. Not necessarily my favorite, but it had me rolling. When you think about a haunted location, you think whispers, wind, chimes, bells, violins, maybe. But you know what you don't expect? Banjos. <laughs> and I just have to talk about B2, the sewers. It was instantly noticeable and stood out to me. And it just added to the hillbilly mechanic ghost. I thought it was hilarious and unexpected. So please enjoy this bizarre addition to Luigi's Mansion's OST. Luigi's Mansion 3 is an 8.5 out of 10. It's a marvelous game, expertly weaving the likes of comedy and horror into a ghastly blend. Now I do think it was a little janky, and especially at the boss fight, that glitch was... irritating, to say the least. And there were a few other glitches throughout my playthrough. None as detrimental as that, though. Also, the rewards for collecting all the booze and gems were very very lackluster. Still a great time, the visuals are a treat, the floors and the puzzle solving is on point, the boss battles are straight fire, some of them I was like Phew. And lastly, a really fun multiplayer experience. Now there's literally no replay value in Luigi's Mansion unless you just want to replay it for the sake of it, but uh yeah, that's Luigi's Mansion 3 in a nutshell. I very much enjoyed it and I would love to know your thoughts. Did you agree with my review? Did you disagree? Did you buy the game yet? What did you think? Until next time, mwah.
Thank you so much for watching. Top box is more reviews like this, and the bottom box is my Let's Play channel. Also, just saying, Christmas is around the corner, and I always leave my Amazon wish list in the description. If you want to help out the channel by sending me a game or an art book for me, myself, and I, I'd appreciate it. Or become a patron. As always, I appreciate your time.